Okay, uh, we are still working here with this uh, single machine infinitive, uh, infinitive boost bar, okay? And um, as I say in the previous video, uh, we need to take care of the reactive power production here because um, if you remember, the problem is that we need to deliver here a power factor of 0 0.8 and as uh, uh, some people try to do, they include here at the synchronous machine 60 megawatt, but they use the local controller as constant Q, constant reactive power. And they define that that reactive power will be happening at a constant power factor of 0 0.8, okay? In that case, of course, of course, when we run the steady state condition, pre-fall conditions, you can see over here, the, the value is 60 megawatt and 45 MVR. That, that, that is the condition, okay? But now, but now the situation is that this is wrong because we need to have that, that reactive power, 45, 45 uh, MVR should be here, not there, okay? I will tell you again. We need to have 45 MVR, a power factor 0 0.8 here in the right hand side in the infinity boost bar, not here. And okay, how do we solve this problem? I say before that I saw many documents, many consultancies where people, they don't reach the pre-contingency conditions. And many times it's happening because people, they don't know or they don't have the full skills about the use of the software, okay? Here, I will tell you one way to solve this problem, okay? Um, one way to solve this problem, it's extremely simple. It's, it's taking advantages of one functionality included inside the Xilin Power Factory, okay? Um, if you look over here again inside the synchronous machine, Power Factory has, um, it, 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 it's developed a lot the um, synchronous machine uh, model, okay? And one of the amazing things that um, people from Power Factory has done for us is including what we call a controller, external controller, okay? Um, this synchronous machine model has the possibility of using a external station controller or external secondary controller, okay? Um, um, one way to do this uh, is mm, very simple, okay? If you go here and you just select with a single cl click the synchronous machine, okay? Right now we have the synchronous machine. What we will do is just right button, okay? <coughs> Sorry. And then we have here, um, we need to, we need to, um, we need to include in this synchronous machine and a station controller, okay? You go here to define, and then there is a, a specific section here on this context menu. You can find a, a station control, okay? Now click here, a station control, and voila, you have here a window that is for configuring to provide data of the station controller, okay? Uh, as you can see, this is a new object. Probably if you are not top user, you don't know about this, but this element is an element station controller, okay? And this is a controller that allows you to control, for instance, in this case, the synchronous machine, but you can use wide area variables. I mean, uh, you can use air, uh, um, signals from anywhere inside the power system, somewhere else, um, to control your uh, system, your generator, okay? In this case, what I will do is the following, okay? What I will do is very basic, simple. Here, I will say that I want to control the power factor, okay? And in this case, in this case, I want to control the power factor to 0 0.8, okay? Because I want the power factor here in this infinity bus bar to be 0 0.8, but right now we define the control mode that we want. That is the, the power factor control, fine. We define the value that we want, the power factor 0 0.8, but we are still to define, to select where, in which place, in which component we are controlling the reactive power. 
uh, sorry, the power factor. Now what I will do here is select, and you can see that uh, Power Factory automatically opened for me uh, the data manager, but is going specifically inside the network data, okay? And I need to control here, if you, if you can see, there is there is a terminal that is called infinity bus okay that is the bar that i want to control but we don't control power factor at the bus bar we control power is in a branch okay it's in a branch for that reason i need to select here okay this is the object i need to control in this bus bar but specifically in this cubicle Okay, remember the power factory has this concept of terminal and every single component that is connected to that terminal, um, they are connected through what we call a cubicle. Okay, and this is just to say, for instance, this is the connector disconnector of this element. Okay, what I'm selecting here, what I'm selecting here is this cubicle. In my case, is the cubicle number three. But you can identify what, uh, the object that is connected over there, and that is the infinity bus that is this beautiful voltage source, okay? Right now, what I am doing is click, and right now we have the full uh, definition of my, well, just, just this part. This part is the basic definition for the LUT flow. We define the control mode, that is a power factor control. We define the, the the place that we want to control, cubicle number three and the infinity bus and the value that we want that is 0 0.8, okay? And if we come back here to general, to basic data, sorry, to basic data, you can see that this controller will be acting, it will be providing signals for, uh, to the synchronous generator, okay? Let me tell you what is doing this. You can imagine the station controller like a controller here in the space. You can see that. And it's taking signal from here, from this cubicle number three. It's taking signal from this cubicle, uh, cubicle uh, number three of this infinity bus bar. And it's ensuring that the power factor in that place will be 0.8. And to do so, to do so, they will add here over this synchronous machine. And let's do that, okay? Now we have here a station controller. You can see, let's go to power flow, and you can see that right now, right now, you can see that we have a external station controller. And that is the moment of through, because right now we are running the load flow, and let's see, okay? We go here to the top. We select here the um, command load flow. We execute, ta -da! and right now we have the solution, okay? If you look over here, now on the right hand side, you can see the infinity bus, you can see 60 and 45, and voila, we have here the amazing power factor, you can see 0 0.8. But remember something, remember that I told you during the presentation, in order that we get here um, 45 MVR, we have reactive power losses at the transmission lines, we have uh, reactive power losses at the transformer, and from here, from this generator, this generator is sending 60.5 MVR, okay? What I'm telling you is that there is a lot of reactive power losses in this system. But that is typical. When we are working with transmission systems, remember that transmission systems, they are designed to minimize active, active power losses. Regarding the reactive power losses, that is another history, because remember that the reactive power losses, they are related with the reactive component of the current, and that is because we have magnetic fields, we, ha we have those magnetic fields in the transmission lines, in the transformers, and so on, and those require energy, reactive energy, okay? But coming back to my explanation, I believe you can see over here that I am showing you, I am showing you, that in this case, um, we reach the value, we reach here 
the 0 0.8 power factor that we need. And you can see that to do so, the synchronous machine that is in red color right now because the loading is above 80, uh, above 85 percent. But in this case, we have this machine. We have this machine that is um, providing the reactive power that we need to get this value. Okay. Another situation that you must understand is in order to this power factor uh, on the right hand side at the infinity boost bar, uh, in order to get this 0 0.8, in order to reach uh, here 45 MBR, we need to send from here to there. Okay. But what is the main problem? Reactive power, they don't like to travel. To be honest, reactive power is local things. Reactive power is quite lazy, okay? They don't want to move. And when they move, the problem is that the voltages start to change. In this case, we are sending reactive power. In this case, you can see how the voltage here at the low voltage uh, boost bar is 1.14. That is above above uh, the, the standards, but we are solving this problem in order to reach the steady state condition that we were asked, and that was 0 0.8 at the, uh, at the uh, uh, infinity bus, okay? Okay, now it's important that you realize that we start from this uh, very bad situation. We start with the situation that we need to know here, we need to have here at the infinity bus, we need to have the power factor 0 0.8. But um, I say before, um, the, the, the reactive power produced by the generator, it's not equal to the, to the, to the reactive power reaching the infinity boost. However, however, the good news is that we use the station controller and right now we are in a much better situation because right now using the station controller, this, this amazing property, this amazing tool from Dixil and Power Factory, now we can be sure that the reactive power reaching the the infinity boost bar is the value that we need. I mean, we are ensuring the power factor equals 0 0.8 here at the infinity boost bar. Well, the situation is solved. Now using this station controller, we solve the situation and we have the perfect uh, pre-fall conditions, okay? However, it's very important that you match the theory with the, you match the theory with the, the practical uh, elements, okay? And um, for instance, um, if you remember my classes about equal area criteria or any of my classes regarding um, time domain simulations, using the differential algebraic model, a key point of the solution, numerical solution, is that you must have all the mm, pre-fall conditions variables. Um, we, we use power factory, we obtain the power factor 0 0.8 at the infinity bus, but we need to take care also about other variables, okay? And, and let me go back to power factory. Power Factory is giving you here very interesting information, okay? If you remember, I installed those uh, additional result bots. And as you can see over here, uh, they are information that is extremely re relevant. P, Q, I, uh, Power Factor, and S, the apparent power, okay? One interesting thing that that's happened many years ago, and I hope no more, no more, no, 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 it will, it will not happen again. Okay, many years ago, one of the students raised the hand and asked me, um, uh, but the current, th this is a series circuit, and in the series circuit, the current must be the same. And he say, look over here, the generator is 3.9 kiloamps, and look over here, the current arriving to the infinity bus bar is 0.18 kiloamps. 
And I remember that I received that question and I say, oh, okay, I need to run more deep explanation about per units and so on, okay? Something that you must, you must understand, yes, this is a series circuit, okay? If you go to the basic definition of a series circuit, yes, uh, there is a, only a single path for the current starting from the source to the load, okay? That is a series connection, of course. But that doesn't mean that the current must have the same value in real units, amps, okay? Um, as you can see over here, as you can see over here, uh, in this side, the current is 3.9 kiloamps. But remember, this, is, this, this, this bus bar, this area here is 11 kV. And if you go to the other side, to the infinity bus bar, of course, the current is 0 0.18 kiloamps because you are in a 232 kV area, okay? What I'm telling you is numerically, numerically, if you are working with per unit, yes, perfect, that is a serious circuit. If you are working in per unit values, of course, the current coming from the generator is arriving to the infinity bus bar but but if you are using if you are using real units that is another history okay that is another history and that is what i will discuss now okay what i will discuss now is um, some figures some numbers related with per unit system and uh, precondition pre-fall conditions okay uh, something that you must be uh, extremely aware of is that when we are running calculations in power system, we need to use this circuit over here. This is the equivalent diagram. This is the reactance diagram. This diagram is showing you the equivalent model for each component inside the power system. We have here the generator. We have here the transmission, um, sorry, the step up transformer. We have two transmission lines. And of course, we have the infinity bus bar, okay? The interesting thing is, if you remember circuit analysis, um, we have data here. We have here data. We have that the, ele the, the electrical power is 0 0.6 per unit. The power factor is 0 0.8. And also, and also uh, remember that also we know that the infinity boost bar is 1 per unit, the magnitude, okay? We can assume that voltage as reference. That is a typical assumption. And if we assume that the voltage of the infinity bus bar is a reference, well, we can obtain, we can obtain the total apparent power, okay? We can obtain the total apparent power dividing the active power by the um, power factor. And we can obtain the angle, the angle of this apparent power S using the... Um, the, uh, the, 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 this functionality and extracting the angle from the power factor, okay? Um, when we put the number together, voila, we have here the total apparent power, 0 0.75 per unit with an angle of 36.86, okay? That is very simple. Of my students, they can do this calculation. There is a video in my YouTube channel. You can go over there. There are more explanation. Here, I'm not, I'm not spending so much time in, in the calculations, okay? But if we know, if we know the total apparent power, <coughs> sorry, it's extremely simple. It's extremely simple that you obtain the current. Using just basic circuit analysis, you must remember um, um, per unit quantities. <coughs> Sorry, um, you can you can obtain uh, the current, and the current is dividing the conjugate the conjugate conjugate of the apparent power divided by the conjugate of this um, uh, infinity bus uh, voltage. Okay, zero point seventy five minus thirty six point eighty six degree divide by one per unit and you obtain here the current okay the current in this case is 0 0.75 per unit 
and the angle defining this polar representation is minus 36.86. That is the current that we were discussing in power factory. If you are using if you are using per unit values, of course this is a serious configuration. Okay, there are a couple parallel li lines here. Okay, but 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 if you look the current, the current is going here, serious, and then we have this parallel, but that parallel is in serious and closing the loop. Uh, what I'm telling you is if we are using per unit quantities, if we are using per unit quantities, in per unit quantities, you can see that the current is the same and it's this polar number here, 0 0.75 per unit at minus 36.86, okay? However, what is important is that if you are using a software, you are using a um, power system analyzer, of course, you need to use real units. Well, real units, um, it can be easily calculated, okay? Because all my students, they are top experts in power system analysis, okay? And as they are very, very knowledgeable about power system analysis, you must remember that if you want, the, if you want to calculate the uh, real units, amps in this case, you need to multiply the per unit value by the base, okay? What I'm telling you is this is the current. If you are working in per unit, this current here and that current there, this current at the generator and this current at the infinity bus, they are the same in per unit and it's equal to 0 0.75 per unit at minus 36 degrees. But if we are using, if we want real units, well, the first step is we need to know, we need to know the uh, base current here at the generator and the generator is working at 11 kV. And if we want the real current here at 230 kV, that is the voltage at the infinity bus bar, again, we need to calculate the base current. And the base current is extremely simple. It's dividing the apparent power by square root three times the base voltage. For instance, here on the left-hand side at the generator, 100 MBA divided by square root three divided by 11 kV, we obtain that the base is 5,248.63 amps, okay? When we multiply that by the per unit value, oh, we obtain here the real current. And the real current that is coming out from the stator of this generator is 3,936.47 amps, okay? And if you look on the other side, we have here the 230 kV, that is the uh, infinity bus bar located at the right hand side. And over here, we divide 100 MBA by square root 3 by 230 kV. And voila, we have here the base current. The base current in this case, the base current in this case is very simple for my student to see. The base current is 251 amps, okay? And if we multiply 0 0.75 per unit, and that is the current in per unit values, we multiply by the base, voila, we have the real current. Real current in this case is 188.26 amps, okay? Now it's important, please remember the numbers, okay? Um, remember the numbers because the angle is the same, okay? The, the current going out from the generator is a minus 36. The current reaching the infinity bus bar is at minus 36. But please, remember right now what is the current at the generator. And you can see that using kiloamps, that should be 3.93 kiloamps. And at the infinity bus bar should be, should be you can see over here, 0 0.188 uh, kiloamps. Let's go to power factory. In power factory, we need to be sure that those values are right, okay? Let's go back to power factory. Well, right now we are here in power factory. And if you are here with me, 
you can see that in this case, in this case, you can see the magnitude of this current is 3.936 kiloamps. If you remember, if you remember my calculations at the presentation a couple seconds ago, we obtained 3,936 amps, and that is equivalent to 3.936 kilo amp. Perfect match. I am really happy to tell you that we have a perfect match here at the synchronous machine. We demonstrate that this is the current, this is right. And then here on the left hand side, wow, we have 0 0.187 kilo amps. And our manual calculation, remember from my presentation, it was 188.26 amp. That means that we have a small discrepancy, but to be honest, that is not a major problem, okay? Um, I love to do this kind of exercises. I love to show my students that using equations, you can get numbers. And then using the software, you can demonstrate that your numbers are right, okay? It's really sad for me. It's really sad for me that then when the student get the degree or the master or, or, or the degree that they are looking for and they go to the industry, they start to use the software. And the, the software is almost every single scene in their life. And then when they have an issue, when they have an issue, they go to the equations. And that is not the way to do things. You must think about the equation every time in your mom, in your life. I mean, uh, people just creating this test system, running the simulation, delivering the results, and then they fail the coursework. And what was the reason? They didn't stop to reflect about the numbers. They didn't stop to reflect and make some manual calculations to be sure that your results are right, okay? I will tell you, this is a very simple example, and people say, no, if you are using a very small system, of course you can do manual calculations. My dear students, if you are working with a massive big power system, equations are still valid. Equation is still valid. Power will be square root three times voltage multiplied by the conjugate of the currents if we are working on three phase power, okay? That equation will be valid, okay? It will be valid in this very small power system or it will be valid even if you are working on the inter, in the intercontinental, uh, intercontinental power system in Europe, okay? Those equations stay valid, okay? Uh, that is a very powerful and very important message for you, okay? Well, now we are here in, in Power Factory and we are almost to, to, to show you um, um, how to how to see, uh, how, how you can show the per unit value of the current and also the phase angle, okay? What I will do is I will stay using this um, this um, additional result box that I already defined, okay? And what I will do is just edit the format and I will uh, insert, a no, it's not insert a row, okay? Let me append a row, okay? Now click here and I will go and I will select, uh, let me select here, positive sequence magnitude in per unit. As you can see, this one, and also I will select this one. That is the positive sequent current angle in degrees. Okay, you can see over here the full description. Okay, and what I will do now is just press OK, and now we have two more uh, variables, result variable here at the result box, and what I will do is say OK. And voila, here we have the result that we were expecting, okay? If you remember my manual calculations that I run at the presentation, if you remember the current, the per unit value was 0 0.75 per unit. And here there is no better, uh, 
there is no better demonstration that we are right and we are so clever that we can use equations that you can see that the positive sequence current is 0 0.750 per unit, okay? And also you can see that we were right in our manual calculations because you can see uh, now the angle is minus 36.87. And that was the current angle that we have, okay? That means that we are perfectly right, we got the proper results, and this system is properly working, okay? What I will do now is I will finish this video by now because uh, we already covered all the aspect of um, setting setting the pre-fall conditions or pre-contingency, okay? And the next video is I will go a step further. I will use power factor and I will show you about the initial conditions. Okay. However, this video has been extremely useful for you. You, 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 you can, you can, you can learn. You can enjoy learning about two things. You, you must understand the theory is quite important. Okay. You can see that I spent many hours explaining theory and theory and theory because then coming here is just five minutes. You put the data, run the simulation, and you got the results. But but then, when you have the results, is where your brain starts to pay the price. Because you need to explain the results. And be sure that your results are properly right. Okay? Well, um, I will finish this video and saying thank you very much for, for to everyone. Thank you very much for watching this video. Remember, if you like this video, please use the like and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. And stay in touch because more videos are coming, okay? More practical uh, aspects of using the excellent power factory for advanced power systems are coming. Please stay in touch and I will say bye now. Thank you very much. Bye.